Okay, so we are in my garage this afternoon and um, I think this is probably the first video that I've done out here in my garage. Um, as you can see, I have a great uh, east facing window that also catches a lot of the afternoon sun. So this is where I uh, move my seedlings to when I've started them in the basement and they get too big. I can bring them up here in March, um, early spring. It is heated in this garage, so it's, uh, it's a nice spot for plants. So you will probably be seeing some more videos happening here in the next few months. But for today, we are going to talk about winter sowing. And today we're gonna to just plant some perennial flowers. I'm gonna start with them today. We are in mid-January. And you can pretty much start your winter sowing any time. It doesn't have to be um, any particular time when it's when you're doing this, because um, as long as it's freezing consistently at night, wherever you live, of course, where I live here in Zone Three, that is not a problem in the middle of January. Um, as long as your plants are going outside and they are being frozen and will remain frozen for a period of time. Um, you can pretty much start January, February, and all into March. Again, you would um, just check your growing zone and pick flowers and perennials, annuals, vegetables, herbs that are hardy to your zone and they should work for you. So you should look for seeds that are um, Look for things that are on the seed packets, such as uh, self-sowing, direct sow outside in the fall or early spring. Those would be the kind of, um, of flowers and plants that will hopefully do the best. Okay, so we're gonna start by getting our jugs ready here. So I take my cordless drill and the first thing you need to do is put some um, holes in the bottom of your jug so that there is a way for the the extra moisture to drain and your your um, so your plant doesn't become saturated with water so I'm going to just start putting about eight to ten holes in the bottom here okay so there's our holes in the bottom and then we're going to try and create a little lid here with a hinge so that we can open this up in the spring easily and uh, check on our on our plants here. So what I do just to get that started, because I'm going to use scissors. I just get a starting hole with my drill, take my scissors here and start cutting. Doesn't have to be anything straight or don't have to worry about it being too perfect. Let's just go right to where the handle starts here. Leave a little space like that uncut. And then you have, give it a little bend, created yourself a nice little hinge lid. So once we have the seeds planted, we'll be taping this shut to turn it into our nice little cozy greenhouse. And then in the spring, when you have some growth and you want to open it up, you can take the tape off. If it gets cold again, you can always put it back. So that is the basic way of getting your milk jug ready. Now I do have some other containers here that I've just found in my around the house that I think will work as well. Something like this, of course, works just as good as a milk jug. It's clear, so it lets in lots of light. You can drill holes in the bottom here. You can do the same thing. Cut, leave a little hinge. So that will work. Um, this is a food container, uh, takeout container that I think should work good. You can plant, you know, you need about three or more inches so I think I'm going to try some of my um, plants in this drill some holes in the top 
drill some holes in the bottom. I also um, have collected a few ice cream containers that have, you know, the opaque sides, so they shouldn't let in enough light. So I'm going to just try them out with drilling holes in the top and drilling holes in the bottom. So I'm going to test out these different types of containers. If you have uh, done winter sewing and have used any special containers you'd like to share, please uh, let me know in the comments below what's what you've used in the past and what works for you. I'm going to start by mixing up a big tub of, of the soil here and then moistening it with some water. I've already put in some peat moss. I'm just going to add in some of the potting soil. You want to make sure that when you um, have this soil in your uh, jugs that it is completely saturated, not, not dripping with water, but really, really moist so that when it thaws in the spring, there's a lot of moisture in there for the seeds. Help with their germination. Okay, so I think I have this moistened up enough. Like I said, it, it's not too wet where it's dripping, but it sticks together. So let's get one of our jugs filled up here. Just start by, it's kind of handy if you have a container like this Rubbermaid to uh, do your potting in so it's a little less messy. say that as I spill it all over the front of my shirt. So I think when you want to pack it in here pretty good. Just make sure you can see that. So I just give it a little press down and I would say you know three inches is a good rule of thumb for anything to be growing in that should be enough. I'm going to start by planting my uh, butterfly uh, milkweed seeds here. I've taken half out and I'm going to try direct sowing those in the spring. So I'm going to just spread these around and being a little more sparingly with these than I would with other seeds just because I don't have a whole lot of them and try to spread them out. I'm not too fancy with my spacing here or worry about it too much but just to try and get them spread out here I think that's enough so you can't see them because they pretty much blend right into the soil here but I've probably put about a dozen or so and then I'm just going to put a light layer of dirt on top I don't want to put too much Give it a little packing. Okay, and we'll get that ready to get taped up, but let's try another one here. So um, if you haven't uh, done winter sewing before, I guess some of the benefits of this is um, that it's, uh, it's an easy way to start your seedlings without having to invest in indoor uh, grow lights and seed starting trays and just trying to find space in your in your home to to start seeds. Um, I do it just because it's kind of a fun thing to do in the winter and kind of compare it to my indoor uh, seedlings to see which works best and I run out of space usually so um, I want to try this with the different different seeds and see how it works. Um, the other thing is too about these is you know it's kind of a plant it and forget it thing where you just put them out into the snow bank and I guess the hardest part is just waiting but as the weather warms the containers will thaw and freeze rep repeatedly as winter uh, progresses its way into spring 
and the action of freezing and thawing helps uh, loose, loosen the seed coat and the seeds know they know when it's time for them to start germinating and um, so they will wait until the till the conditions are suitable for them and when spring hits and the warm air the warm sun heats up these jugs um, they will start germinating and the rain and the snow will continue to um, keep the uh, the soil moist and um, yeah it should should all work out sometimes you know every season can be a bit different if we have an early early spring or we have a long long cold winter that uh, lasts into spring but for the most part it should work out pretty good so the other the thing I'm going to try is the yarrow and it is a, a perennial as well and when you when you're looking for uh, you know suitable seeds to to do the winter sowing you look for things like um, seed early spring or late fall so you know that it's more of a um, a cold weather type seed that needs to go through that stratification process so we're going to try some yarrow in here these are very tiny tiny seeds so I'm just going to sprinkle them lightly across the top here and be a little overly generous probably and just a light layer of more soil on top Okay, so before we uh, tape these shut, I just wanted to um, tell you that something that I do, because sometimes, like I said, the uh, the writing on the outside may wear off, is to mark inside what you uh, planted in there and the date. And um, make sure you do it right after you plant it, because I literally just had to remind, rewind my video to figure out which one was the arrow and which one was the the butterfly uh, weed because I right off the bat just um, got the two mixed up and wasn't sure which one was which so so the way that you I find the easiest to get your duct tape on here I guess first of all take off these gloves don't need those so I always rip mine off on the counter here make sure I got a big enough strip to go around the whole jug so I just start by taping it at the one end of the where the hinge starts don't worry about sticking it just kind of quickly wrap it around holding it in place here if it overlaps that's okay then I just work at getting it to stick all the way around make sure it's just well sealed right where the slit is and that has worked good for me then um, I write on the top here some people say right on the bottom but I wrote on the top and again I forgot what it was already this is the hero and today's date And there it is. It's all ready to go out into the snowbank and wait for spring. So we'll do the next one here. We'll do this one in red just for fun. Regular gray duct tape works fine. It's probably cheaper than this colored stuff that I bought.
Might as well add a little color out in the garden. So stick it where the hinge starts here. Just hold the place. Try not to get stuck to your microphone cord. This one I made a little too long. And I just try to make sure it's stuck where the... Some of these jugs have kind of a, an indent in it that makes it a little bit finicky, but I think it'll be fine. I haven't had trouble with my duct tape coming off in the winter, but... Again, you just double check in your jug to see what you got planted in here. Believe me, putting that extra uh, label inside the jug will be a lifesaver. <laughs> so this is the butterfly weed, January 12. I just wanted to show you also something that I do just to um, just to get you know a little extra moisture into this soil before we put it out into the snowbank. Something like this um, tinfoil pan works really good and I'll just put a little extra water into the pan here and while I'm getting some more jugs ready I'm just gonna let it sit in this water and uh, wick up a bit more just to give it a little extra moisture. Um, also, I didn't mention that I do use rainwater or melted snow, which um, if you're able to get some, I would recommend that as well. I'm sure anytime you can give your plants rainwater or uh, melted snow water is a, is a bonus. So I always have a pail of uh, snow melting in my garage here to water my house plants and uh, any other good things I got growing. So I'm just going to set this to the side and let it soak up some water and do some more jugs here. Thanks to my daughter Brady for being the cameraman today. So I'm just trying to figure out where the best place to put these first set of jugs are so that they won't blow away. So I think we'll just set them in the snow right here. A little insulation there. So there we have our first official planting for 2021 in our garden. So we're going to head inside and do some more jugs up and get some more out here in the garden. <laughs> 